Добро вечер, почитувани гледачи. Еве на со нова емисија од нашиот сериал. Меѓутоа, оваа емисија не е од сериалот Диалози за Македонија. Бидејќи во вечерашнава емисија ќе говориме за нешто што е светски процес, но се уште е по тангискиот термин underground, односно неофицијално. Имено, вечерва ќе зборуваме за она што се случува и зема се поголем замав во светот, особено на социјалните мрежи, односно на интернет, а тоа е, е криптокаренси и биткоинс, односно криптофинанси и е, виртуелни пари. На оваа тема во Македонија не може да се најде релевантен соговорник, затоа што Банката на Република Македонија не ги дозволува овие виртуелни е, финансиски инструменти. Затоа го искористивме престојот на господинот Сен Ваклин повторно во Македонија и го поканивме во нашето студио. Господин Ваклин, добре дојдовте. Thank you for having me again. Good to see you. А, да почнеме вака. Колку време функционира до сега познатиот финансиски систем во светот, т.е. банките, берзите, финансиските токови, готовите пари во книжни и во метални пари, она што секој човек го има во рацете во цел свет. Metal coins and metal money is very very old as uh, as you know. There are currencies issued by Alexander the Great, the currencies before that and mm -hmm. so on and so forth. But paper money, what we call fiat money is a relatively new invention. It's about uh, 300 years old. Banks are about five, 600 years old. They, they originated in Vin Venice with the traders, Venetian traders, and so on and so forth. I would say they're generally about a few hundred years old, the mm -hmm. various elements of the financial system. Познато е дека тој систем функционира, барем во капиталистичкиот свет, на циклуси, односно uh, како кругови кои uh, му обезбедуваат uh, нагорен тренд, развој, па достигнува еден врт, па потоа на една шпаја, па потоа пак се обновува и така натаму. <coughs> колапс, но тој колапс е карактеристичен по тоа што, бидејќи е земјата тркалезна, има домино ефект. Ако главната берза се накашла, овие настенуваат по малите. Со други зборови, дали тој System functions like this, as you explained, or do you have any additional explanations? The only thing I want to say is that um, this is what you described is typical of globalization. There were two waves of globalization at the beginning, at the end of the 19th century and the beginning of the 20th century, when the world, by the way, was much more globalized than even today, and globalization today, where there is globalization, money moves freely across borders. Um, all the stock exchanges are connected to each other. All the banks feed into each other and constitute each other's reserves, guarantee each other, and so on and so forth. So in the global financial system, there is actually only a single financial system. Mm -hmm. And therefore, all reverberations, all ups and downs, all vicissitudes, all changes in mood, because it's a lot to do with mood and sentiment, and all new financial and economic information are incorporated almost instantaneously all over the world. But in the vast majority of human history, financial systems have been separated from each other. There was no globalization. That was the result of the fact that information traveled very slowly and had no time to be incorporated uh, immediately. So the, what we are experiencing today in the financial system is uh, actually an aberration. It's an exception. Mm -hmm. It's not the rule. А uh, во 2006 година, значи се враќаме назад многу години, во дневник прочита ваше писмо во кое најавивте дека ќе настапи светска финансиска криза која се појави 2008 година. Дали во тоа време кога се појави тоа ваше писмо во дневник кога ја, ја најавивте таа финансиска криза во 2008, имаше реакции во јавноста на Македонија на тоа ваше јавно писмо или така помина? No, actually, most other papers and magazines in Macedonia picked it up. I gave a big interview to Capital and so on and so forth. But no one believed it, because in 2006 there was huge euphoria all mm -hmm. over the world. Stock exchanges were breaking new records. Economies all over the world were in very good shape. Um, countries and supranational organizations like the European Union and banks and central banks were issuing cheap money 
were giving cheap credits, were fueling the economy with fake uh, prosperity <laughs> based, based on, on easy money, without any guarantees, without any collaterals. So if you were the government of Greece, you could borrow two, three hundred billion dollars, which is bigger than your economy. If you are an individual, you can borrow money to go on a vacation, which is not a productive use of the money. And so on and so forth. Everyone was happy. Everyone is, was in the sky. No one believed that there could be such a mega crisis. Možete li za našive gledači da objasnite, iako kažete nešto na ova tema? Ta svjetska ekonomska kriza v 2008. beše prvo pojavena v sad, pa potem se preleja na vsi te drugi berzi, odnosno na vsi te drugi meridijani na svetot. Što točno se sluči v sad v 2008. godina? It started with a collapse in, uh, in real estate. Real estate prices reached the sky because there was a lot of uh, cheap money. This cheap money was given by the banks to people who could not pay it back. So when they started not to pay it back because they didn't have a salary, they didn't have income, they didn't have a job, when they started not to pay back these loans, uh, the banks started to uh, foreclose. In other words, to take back mm -hmm. the apartments, mm -hmm. to take back the houses. And then all the banks tried to sell all these apartments and all these houses that they took back. They tried to sell them at the same time. And of course, there were no buyers. So the real estate market in the United States collapsed. Once the real estate market collapsed, some banks began to collapse. Once the banks began to collapse, stock exchange began to collapse. And then insurance companies like AIG, Aetna, um, also collapsed because they insured the banks and the stock exchange and the brokerage than investment banks. And it was a domino effect within, contained within the financial system in the United States and the financial system in the United Kingdom, which is intimately connected to the United mm -hmm. States. Mm -hmm. Then there was a second wave, which is actually not related to the first wave at all, but happened at the same time. So we, by mistake, connect the two. And the second wave had to do with cheap uh, institutional money provided to governments in uh, Europe especially South European governments, um, such as Spain, Portugal, Greece, and so on. It's a totally separate crisis. It's a sovereign debt crisis. These are simply governments who couldn't pay back too much money that they have taken because they did not invest this money wisely and productively. They used it to finance budget deficits or to give money to people for consumption and so on, so they didn't have money to pay back. And that was a second crisis, of course. The confluence, the combination of the two crises, almost destroyed the financial system in the world. Mm -hmm. But they were unrelated. Vi po dlogo vreme živejete v Skopje, iako sega ste nadvor od njega, međutoa ste verojatno svedok na ono što se sluči so gradežnata ekspanzija v Skopje. Ovdešnji od Zavod za statistika objavi da ima mnogo izgradeni, a ne prodadeni stanovi. Da li Cenite deka je možno v ramkite na Makedonija da se reprizira 2008, što beše na svetsko nivo, no sega v minijaturna forma ovde v Makedonija, bideći gradežnite firmi izgradija stanovi, zemeni se krediti od bankite, ne možda da se prodadat. Kako će se vratati tije krediti? Da li bankite će gi plenat stanovite, pa potoa će imat nedvižnosti za prodažba i da li cenata će padja? I am not following, I live outside Macedonia, as you know, I live in Russia. I haven't been following the Macedonian market and especially real estate market enough to give you an answer, but about specifically about Macedonia. But what you describe is a typical cycle in real estate construction. Uh, constructors, construction companies over, over value, overestimate the demand. Then they overbuild, then there is a stock of unsold real estate. This depresses the prices. Once the prices are depressed, there are two possibilities. If the prices are depressed, but uh, there are buyers at a depressed price, then there's no crisis. But if the prices go down and still there are no buyers, then there is a crisis. <laughs> Now, usually there are no buyers when the economy is in a bad shape, when there is recession, when there is very high unemployment, when there is no elites, uh, however small, with excess money, when there is no liquidity, when the central bank uh, prevents commercial banks from giving loans, etc., etc. That's not the case in Macedonia. Okay. Во предходниот одговор кажавте дека не сте сега во Македонија, да работите во Русија. Што работите таму и каде? 
In Russia, I'm a professor of psychology in uh, Rostov, uh, in South Federal University in uh, Rostov. Rostov na Don. Rostov na Don, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, tamo yes, in my other head, I'm uh, a psychologist. Koji se vašite pretežno grupići ovaj, slušatelji na vašite kursevi? Da li se to ljudje mladi, vo srednji godini, postari? Bogati, siromašni i tako na tamo. I give, two, I give three types of uh, lectures. One for the white public, one for students who are in the second and third year of psychology, and one for faculty, which, I mean, professors, mm -hmm. which they study about Western psychology. Because Russia has its own uh, psychology, its own psychologists. M vast majority of Russians don't read English, which uh, separates them from the mainstream of psychology. They cannot read text, they cannot read research, they cannot read so. They go their own way and they develop their own notions of psychology and their own. And I'm trying to create a bridge between Western psychology and Rus Russian psychology. It's not easy because uh, Russians are, how to put it gently, very proud. Mm -hmm. And they don't think they have much to learn from the West. They think the West is a failed experiment in every field in family values, in, in psychology of the individual, in, the, in economics, in politics. They think the, there is nothing they can learn from the West and that their ways are the best. And that is typical of uh, many countries, more and more, I, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. We see a similar trend in the United States. Do koji zaključoci ste dojedeni na tije kursevi vo Rostov na Don, na koga rabotite, so onije vaši slušatelji koji se uh, materijalno dobro situirani, odnosno se dosta bogati. Da li se tije srećni ljudje, odnosno da li bogatstvo to je povrzano so srećata? No, absolutely no, no connection. Wealth, money is a love substitute. When you get money from the world, never mind in which way, you feel that the world loves you. But money uh, fulfills two main psychological functions, feeling of security and feeling of freedom but not happiness. Security, insecure people, people who believe that the world is hostile, dangerous, needs to be controlled, manipulated, then mm -hmm. money for them is very important. It uh, lets them sleep well at night. People who are equally concerned with freedom, they are afraid of commitment, afraid of long-term obligations, afraid of making moves that will tie them down into specific individuals or specific profession or specific location. For them, money is also a way out. It's, uh, it guarantees them the ability to pack the things and go wherever they want, whenever they want, mm -hmm. and so on. Let's see if we go to the last topic of this episode. Is there a reaction on the first Bitcoin in 2009 in Japan? It was a reaction to the world crisis that I mentioned in 2008. Technically, the, the paper, the technical paper that established Bitcoin was published in 2008 by a group of uh, developers, uh, IT developers, information technology developers, who called themselves uh, Nakamoto, but actually it's not an individual, it's a group, now we know, because they admitted it online. Uh, they were reacting definitely, not necessarily to the financial crisis, but to the fact that the financial system is centralized, mm -hmm. controlled by central banks and a very small group of uh, global commercial banks. And they thought that the over-centralization of a commercial system gives undue benefits to the 1%, to a very few individuals, and taxes unfairly uh, small people. So it's it was part actually of the 99% movement, the movement that said that 1% of the population control the other 99%, the 1% of the population make all the money, 1% <laughs> of the population accumulate all the assets, 1% of the population have all the political power, and that's not fair. So there was a 99% movement, which was actually kind of bunt, kind of rebellion against the 1%. So we saw Occupy Wall Street and the Tea Party and many other. And I think it was part of this global movement to try to destroy or to counter or to fight somehow all institutions which proved to be not in favor of the common men, not in favor of the individual, but in favor of some elite, uh, el rapacious elite, uh, venal elite, which stole everything, confiscated everything, and left all of us poor. 
Објаснивте, но сепак во следново прашање ќе ве прашам нешто околу она што е правило во банкарскиот систем. Именно во секоја држава банкарскиот систем е здрав, јак и силен, бидејќи сите пари се кај него, парите се моќи. Додека економските субјекти, ноштвото од население, се финансиски слаби и тенки. Кој е вашиот коментар за ова? Зошто е тоа така? The modern nation state is a new invention. It started in the 19th century. Before there were nation states, there were kingdoms, and before there were kingdoms, there were empires. We had different types of organizing ourselves as human beings in order to collaborate and achieve results. So this is the latest form of organization, nation state. It's 150 years old, it's very new. So because it's very new, it's still an ongoing experiment. We think that nation states are natural because mm -hmm. we all live in nation states, but it's very new and we don't know how to do many things. And one of the things we don't know how to do is how to manage, we still don't know how to do, is how to manage exchange of goods and services in a way that will be fair to the producer and the consumer, the investor and the shareholder. They, I mean, we don't know to allocate wealth and money in a fair way because today the state controls money and that is also a very new development. <laughs> the, central, the concept of central bank is less than 90 years old. It's new. We don't know how to manage central banks effectively. We are still experimenting. The modern state is founded on two monopolies. Monopoly on money and monopoly on violence. If you walk out of the studio and beat someone up, you will end up in jail. Yeah. But if a policeman will do that or a soldier will kill someone, that's okay because he is acting on behalf of the state. Mm -hmm. That's the monopoly of violence. Similarly, if you print money in your, at, at home, you will in the, end up in jail. But if uh, Nebergamer prints money, that's okay because it's a monopoly of the state. The same action is criminalized if it is done by individuals and allowed if it is done by, by states. By state. But it guarantees, it guarantees stability, it guarantees confidence, it mm -hmm. guarantees safety, and it allows uh, somehow, most of the time, uh, trust. It creates trust. Because, for example, if money is controlled by a central authority, we can trust this central authority not to print too much money or not to print uh, not enough money. We can trust this central authority to make sure that the banks don't steal too much from us, that they don't exaggerate in how they give loans, etc., etc. So it's a question of trust. Da, međutoa, sigur ce vei putea să am na eden nas colega care răbote cu BBC negoate ime Michael Palin. Michael Palin e novinar care patuva ni svetot so echipa televizica și snima razno razni reportaje. Coga bise na Caimanski te ostrovi, tamu snima sezoni e golemi gusteri Caimani, care во своите лигавици имаат јаки отрови и кога ќе ја фатат жртвата, тие само и ќе ја гризнат колку да ги прими отровите и потоа умира и потоа тие мрши се нивна храна. Кога тоа го прикажа, Майкл Палин даде ваков коментар. Овие ме подсетуваат на нашите банкари. Дали таа споредба според вас е соодветна? I think he's confusing because most people are confusing. He's confusing commercial banks retail banks with investment banks. Mm -hmm. Commercial banks uh, like Comercial, uh, Stupanska and so on, these are banks that take your money and then give it to companies uh, to invest, to employ, to create products, etc., etc. And this is a very beneficial activity. It's a very safe activity usually. And the vast majority of commercial and retail banks are very uh, stable, very good, and so on. There is another brand of banks, another breed of banks, and they are known as investment banks. Investment banks are banks who take your money and speculate, essentially. They speculate in, in a variety of ways. They can buy stocks, they can buy bonds, they can, they can become hedge funds, they can, um, they, they speculate, there are many vehicles of speculation. But ultimately it is speculation. Mm -hmm. These banks are unstable, inherently unstable. They collapse very often and so on. And the managers of these banks and the shareholders of, of these banks act in most cases in history, unfairly, by actually stealing your money in a variety of ways, in the forms of commissions, in the forms of fees, in the form of hidden secret transactions that you are not aware of, 
in the form of insider trading. There's a lot of crime in investment banking. And I think he's confusing the two. Da li ovije projekti kriptokarensi et bitcoins se piramidalni šemi ili ne? Not in my view. I know that it is uh, very common to say that, and I know that uh, you know, everyone says, yes, yes, it's pyramid, but I don't think so. Pyramid scheme has a few characteristics. First of all, every pyramid scheme has an organizer. Organizer, an organizing committee, group of people who benefit from the scheme and who perpetuate the scheme and who organize the scheme. Bitcoin and so on have no central authority, no organizer, no organizing committee. It's a network where everyone is equal to everyone. Second thing, in every pyramid scheme, there is guarantee of income. The organizers of the pyramid scheme tell you, you are going to make 2% a week, and we guarantee that, and you are going to get that, etc., etc. The income is usually insanely high. The income that is promised to you is insanely high. Bitcoin doesn't promise you any income of any kind, and there's, there's no promises made. Od kada toga dođe interes od ljudi to da kupuvat bitcoini za to što Bitcoin od na vreme to jedan Bitcoin vredeše na 20.000 dolari. If you bought 100 dollars of Bitcoin, if you bought 100 dollars of Bitcoin in uh, 2010, you would have today 7.6 million dollars in seven years. The reason uh, Bitcoin is, and not only Bitcoin, there are 200 coins like Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. They are known as altcoins. The reason these crypto coins cryptocurrencies are so popular is that people don't have where to invest their money. If you have money and you put it in bonds, you get almost nothing. If you put it in savings account, you get almost nothing. In some countries in the world, like Japan, you have negative interest, mm -hmm. meaning that if you put your money, you have to pay the bank to keep your money. You're not getting anything. So a lot of money went to stocks and stock exchanges exploded. The stock exchange is, is, was at a record level in the United States two weeks ago. A lot of money went to real estate, and real estate exploded all over the world. People are looking where to put their money. Bitcoin, so Bitcoin provides an investment vehicle, investment opportunity. Second thing, Bitcoin is speculative. It's a casino, and people love casinos. In 1634, <coughs> in Amsterdam, there was an exchange like a stock exchange, but people were not buying and selling stocks. They were buying and selling flowers, tulips. Mm -hmm. The black tulip at the time, in, in 1634, 1635, the black tulip was worth like a house of two floors. <laughs> Now, you couldn't take tulips and pay. You couldn't buy with them coffee yes, or water. Yes, yes. It's nothing to do. It's just speculation. So there is a strong speculative element in Bitcoin. Now, some people thought in 2008, 9, 10, 11, some people thought that Bitcoin would become like a currency, that you will be able to take Bitcoin and buy something. But this did not happen. Of 500 biggest retailers, biggest shops in the world, of the 500 biggest, you can pay with Bitcoin only in three. So Bitcoin cannot be used to buy anything, almost. Instead, what happened? Bitcoin became the currency of criminals. Bitcoin is the main currency in cybercrime when people, when uh, hackers, uh, malicious hackers, crackers, steal your computer or something, they uh, insist that you pay them with Bitcoin to give you your computer back. It's called ransomware. Mm -hmm. um, last year, South Korea found $600 million dollars of criminal activity conducted through Bitcoin. In South Korea alone, which is not one of the biggest markets of uh, Bitcoin. China, for example, thinks, Chinese authorities think, that there are anywhere between three to 20 billion dollars in criminal activity in China using Bitcoin. So consequently, China essentially banned Bitcoin. You're not allowed to mine Bitcoin. You're not allowed, it's actually, you're not allowed to do almost anything. Dali criminality activity se plaća so virtualni pari, bitcoini, za da se izbjegne kontrola od državata od finansijskite vlasti? It's not exactly true that uh, bitcoin is anonymous. Not exactly true. Because every buyer and seller of bitcoin has a 30 digit number, mm -hmm. like lična kauta, which identifies that user. And essentially, if law authority insists, 
they can find who is this number. So it's not true that it's anonymous. Moreover, you, you buy and sell bitcoins usually through an exchange. For example, the biggest exchange in the United States is called Coinbase. And when you register with Coinbase, they insist that you give them a copy of the passport, a number of your bank account, your full name, address, etc. Yes. So it's not true that Bitcoin is anonymous. But if your servers, if your computers are in some territories, for example in Russia and so on, you are untouchable even if you, it, they know who you are. So very often, for example, the United States issues indictments, issues accusations against Russian hackers who are cyber criminals and get paid with bitcoins, but they're untouchable. So uh, bitcoin is also used by terrorists, also used by money launderers. There's a new phenomenon called crypto jacking. Crypto jacking is when people, when hackers confiscate your computer in order to generate new bitcoins. Etc. Etc. So unfortunately, no, for, unfortunately for Bitcoin. No, ne odam na pročitav na internet od verodostojan izvor beše naglaseno deka od Amerikanskata komisija za trgovija so stokuje futuresi ispratile pokani na berzite za digitalni valuti Bitfinex i Tether kompanija što je emitira popularna te istoimena kriptovaluta za koja tvrdi deka je povrzana so dolarot. Pazite se ga. Dvete kompanije imat ist izvršen direktor. Kako go komentirate ova? There is uh, governments, central banks and commercial banks all over the world uh, waking up to the risks in cryptocurrencies. Criminalized activity is one risk, but speculative bubbles are another risk. The um, processing of transactions with cryptocurrencies is very slow. The software has many bugs. There are serious problems with the platforms where, where we trade uh, uh, cryptocurrencies and serious problems with the use made of, with cryptocurrencies. So you see a global trend all over the world to check who are the exchanges, who is behind the exchanges. Many exchanges are closed, for example, in China. Last, uh, a few, um, two, three months ago, the Securities and Exchange Commission in the United States um, confiscated all the money that was raised by a new type of coin. Mm -hmm. Someone issued a new type of coin. It's called Initial Coin Offering, ICO. And they confiscated $600 million out of $2 billion. Uh, so there is the... Uh, it was totally predictable that governments will not allow anyone to print money. It was totally predictable. They are protecting the monopoly now. The commercial banks, the central banks are protecting monopoly. At the same time, they are adopting the technology. Technology is known as blockchain technology. So commercial banks, governments, and other types of companies like shipping companies, information technology companies, uh, even power, power grid companies, electricity companies, are adopting the technology that gave rise to cryptocurrencies, known as blockchain technology. So my prediction is that cryptocurrencies will be banned in most countries. They will become a criminal activity. They will not be allowed in the vast majority of countries. Central banks and commercial banks will not accept, trade, buy or sell cryptocurrencies and prevent individuals from doing so. Crypto, some cryptocurrencies will survive, but in very, very tiny niches of finance, like crowdfunding. But the technology that gave, gave rise to cryptocurrencies will become universal and used almost in all human economic activities. Прочитав дека трансферите на фудбалерите, што е сега во овој период доста актуелно, се вршат со плаќање во биткоини. Се прочитавме дека тоа било случај во Турција, сега и во Бугарија. Дали она што се случува во спортот, трансферот на звездите кои носат пари, ќе го освојат uh, просторот на криптокаренси и биткоини или ќе плаќаат во конкретни валути? Listen, if you cannot use Bitcoin to buy and sell anything, or very little, then Bitcoin is not very useful. At some point, you need to convert Bitcoin to, to dinars and to US dollars and to euros to buy coffee. Otherwise, it's useless to you. So, 
I think that cryptocurrencies will survive in niche, niche types of activities. So mention sports, uh, arts, um, they will survive, I think, in uh, crowdfunding and so on. I'm not saying that cryptocurrencies will disappear, but I'm saying that they will come, become currencies of specific human economic activities, not global currencies, mm -hmm. which you can use in everything, but currencies identified with some things, including crime. They will never, I mean, crime will always use this currency. That's all I'm saying. But the technology under the currencies will become global, universal. Ако овие финансиски трансакции што се вртат во виртуелниот свет преку компјутерите и интернетот, како ти се заштитени од хакерите, од упадот на непоканетите гости? Блокчейн технологија, which is the technology underlying fundamental to the cryptocurrency, is the safest technology ever invented by humans. The absolutely the safest. Во што е суштината на yeah, it, so is, system. it is safest because it is a network of millions of computers and whenever any of these computers buys or sells anything, for example, Bitcoin, all other computers are immediately and simultaneously updated. Mm -hmm. Consequently, if a hacker wants to change the record, wants to falsify something, he needs to falsify all these millions of computers, and that, of course, is utterly impossible. Not only that, but the transactions are uh, with very strong encryption, so he needs also to break the encryption. Not only that, but there are special people known as miners or minters, and these people monitor all the time the transactions, make sure that they are uh, uh, correspond to all the other uh, nodes, all the other computers, and so on. So there are multiple layers, and there is no hacker who can ever break this system. Mm -hmm. That is for sure. <coughs> except, just let me finish the answer, except when we are going to have quantum computers. When we will have quantum computers, the computing power will be enough to break this system. Mm -hmm. That is why the uh, Nakamoto group, the group which invented Bitcoin, is now, has now invented a new, new cryptocurrency. This new cryptocurrency is called Qubit. And it's going to be like Bitcoin, but on quantum computers. So it will be much faster, and it will be impossible to crack, because you would need computing power equal to all the power of the atoms of the universe to crack a single transaction. So no one will do that. I want, to give you, I want to give you two statistics, because people don't understand. If I buy a single Bitcoin from you now, you, I update my computer, you update your computer. Of course, because you sold me, you're minus, I'm plus. But that's not enough. All the computers of Bitcoin, all over the universe, from Mongolia to Australia, are updated mm -hmm. with this transaction of us. Not only this transaction is updated, but all the transactions since 2009 are updated. Consequently, by buying and selling one Bitcoin, you and I are using computing power equal to 100 times the computing power of Google. And we are using electricity equal to the daily output of three nuclear reactors. These are the figures. Four, four giga, gigawatts. Yes, because if you put all these millions of computers together, they are bigger than Google. And if each one of them is using electricity, you calculate. China calculated that in a single transaction in China last year, the computers in China only uh, consumed four, four gigabyte, gigawatts like three nuclear reactors which were in the area. So China, mm -hmm. China and other authorities calculated that in three years, by 2019, Bitcoin alone will consume 4% of ele global electricity, which is, of course, unacceptable. Како заклучок можам да истакнам дека од досегашниот разговор вие тврдите дека тие виртуелни валути 
od državite se osudeni na nelegalnost i ne možat da bidat predmet na oficijalni transakciji. No mi se nametnuva jedna sporedba. Trgovijata so narkotici, so droga, so živorobje, so i taka natamo, što je zabraneto. Nikako da se iskoreni naprotiv toga funkcionira. Da li to će se slučiti isto i so virtualnite valuti? Online you have huge markets, they are known as the dark net or dark web. Huge markets for everything. Uh, there, for example, uh, I, I, uh, I'm involved with a publishing company. So there are huge uh, websites like Sci-Hub and others where you can download millions of books free of charge. Latest books, free of charge. Some of these books cost two, three thousand dollars, but you can download them free of charge there. So of course, nothing disappears, if that's what you're asking. B uh, cryptocurrencies will never disappear, never, because they are needed. They are needed in some niches, some activities, some for some human needs. So they will remain and, and so on. But uh, the states, the con many countries will issue their own cryptocurrencies. For example, Russia, Venezuela, and Sweden are considering to issue this year their own cryptocurrencies, state cryptocurrencies. Uh, central banks all over the world may decide to use cryptocurrencies as part of the reserves. Today they have gold, today they have uh, euros, today also maybe 0.1% or 1% or 2% in Bitcoin, why not? So uh, stocks, you buy and sell stocks, you buy and sell art, you finance, uh, co-finance projects and so on. There are users, possible users for cryptocurrencies. The mistake of the cryptocurrency movement, the big mistake, the catastrophic mistake for them, is that they declared war, which they can never win. <laughs> they declared war on the financial system. And ultimately, if the cryptocurrency is not translated into real currency, it's useless. If I cannot take cryptocurrency and make it into euro, it's useless for me. Da, međuta, dozvolite izagledačeva i vas da ve podsjetam na jedna izjava na Steven Ines šef za trgovija na Azijsko-Pacifičkijo region vo Oanda. Toj za Bloomberg izjavi, regulatorniot nadzor na vistina sega izlegova na preden plan. No jaz mislim, deka do sega ne vidovme se. Što ne videli ovije šefovi na berzi v odnos na kriptovalutite i bitcoinot? Prvo v ovih vse 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 some very, very huge stock exchanges, like the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, and shortly will be New York Stock Exchange, and so on, they introduced contracts based on cryptocurrencies. So today you have futures, options, that you can buy and sell with cryptocurrencies. The minute mutual funds, hedge funds, stock exchanges entered the field, that minute they are bringing with them the government, because the government regulates there is regulation for stock exchanges, for contracts, for... So the minute big players, like commercial banks, like investment banks, like stock exchanges, begin to buy and sell cryptocurrencies or contracts based on cryptocurrencies, the government is in. The minute the government is in, it will regulate cryptocurrencies. The minute it regulates cryptocurrencies, they will become a part of the nazo, of the remit of the central bank whichever central bank it is. Mm -hmm. The minute it's part of the central bank, it will become a banking asset. And we'll lose, we'll lose its appeal. It will no longer be a cryptocurrency, but another currency. That's what I'm saying. Vorete, ovije vaše objasnuvanja možem da ga razberam, međuta mi se nametno jedno ovakvo prašanje. Kada je tuka mestota na veštačkati inteligencija koja od den na den zema se pogolem zamav, na primjer, Веројатно гледачеве знаат дека роботите во Јужна Кореја плаќаат данок на имот. Значи тие, како вештачка интелигенција, веќе ствараат нови вредности и треба да ги платат нешто на државата. Стивен Хокинг вели дека вештачката интелигенција е многу опасна, бидејќи 
vo jeden odreden stepen na njezin razvoj. Ta će shvatiti da kad nije luđe to nesme su vršeni i po sistemot na njezinata logička razmisla će ne uništi. Da li postoji takva opasnost veštačkata inteligencija da ge prevzeme kriptovalutite i bitcoinot i drugite virtualni valuti? Ova prašanje... Uh, computers, uh, cryptocurrencies are not real currencies. No one has bitcoin. There's no coin. These are codes, computer code. These are lines in a, in a program. It is theoretically possible that uh, artificial intelligence will take over cryptocurrencies at some point. The question is not as crazy as it sounds. Um, for example, artificial intelligence today does 70% of all stock trading in the world. Humans are not involved. Computers are selling to computers. All a, the stocks a in the world. Yes. All, all, uh, 70% of all the buying and selling of stocks, shares, in the major stock exchanges in the world is done between machines. Not a single human being is involved. Not at the beginning, not at the end, nothing. A dobro, so, tije mašini sami se vključuvati ili čovjek ko treba da pritiste na kopče no, pa da ga vključi? No, no, no. They operate autonomously. There is a program there which was put a year ago, two years ago, and from that moment they operate totally autonomously. Actually, big part of the recent drop in American stock exchanges, which is about 10%, about 7-8% of the 10%, was a result of machines going out of control and selling without any any stop without any so the question sounds crazy but in finance it's not crazy definitely i can foresee possibility of artificial intelligence realizing somehow that this is an investment asset and trying to take over it we call this process cornering to corner the market i can see that as to the threat that artificial intelligence uh, poses I don't regard artificial intelligence as a competing life form, like we and lizards or we and chimpanzees. I don't think it's another life form. <laughs> I think it's us. Artificial intelligence is us. One day you will have this uh, tiny, tiny, tiny chip with artificial intelligence and they will put it in your brain. And you will have that capacity also. So I think what we, actually what will happen is not that artificial intelligence will take over us. But I think we are artificial intelligence and us will become one, will merge. Mm-hmm. And we will become cyborgs, partly human, partly artificial intelligence. I think that's where it's going. Do you think that we can be integrated with the artificial intelligence? That's what I just said. <laughs> that I think we can. Господин Вакнин, ова што сега го кажавте беше всушност одговор на моето последно прашање. Кои се вашите прогнози за воеднина? Во кои правци ќе се одвиваат овие процеси? Which of them? <laughs> Which process? <laughs> na uh, uh, internet valutite na virtualnite pari. As I said, uh, cryptocurrencies will be regulated, controlled by the state, uh, ultimately issued by the state, so by states. So I think the individual phase is over. All technologies, all technologies, when they start, they start with hackers, they start with individuals, they start with anarchists. It was true, true with radio. Radio started with amateurs. It was true with television. It was all technology start like this. Internet, of course. But then after 20 years, 10 years, 30 years, depending on the technology, the state and commercial interests take over. It's simple. This will happen in cryptocurrencies. It will happen with artificial intelligence. It will happen with everything. Once you invent something that can make money or has any value in exchanging economic uh, factors, The minute you invent something like this, you invent it as individual. And then other individuals get interested. And then commercial banks see that it's interesting and they enter. And then regulators regulate the commercial banks. And then the national bank regulates the regulators. And then the state takes over. Ultimately, everything is nationalized. Poštovni gledači, ova beše razgovorot so gospodinu Ocem Vaknin. Ова што го говоревме, ако нешто не ви е јасно, јавете се во нашата редакција, па ќе ви објасниме. Ваклин, ви благодарам на овој разговор. Thank you for having me. Pleasure. Довидување и пријатно до следната средба.